Year 12 and welcome to your bridging work lesson 2. What do we really know? Well today we're looking at scepticism. Take notes. Scepticism is the concept of doubting or questioning and we're all sceptics to some degree. Just remember the last magic trick you saw. As you're watching it I'm sure you were being sceptical. You were doubting what you were seeing in front of you. Doubting the reality as presented by the magician. We know that to discover truth, we need to ask questions and we can't accept things on face value and we can't accept things without question. So scepticism, if we want truth, is going to be vital. Now, there's a word for somebody who isn't sceptical. The opposite of a sceptical person is a gullible person. Somebody who believes everything they're told. Somebody who doesn't question. And that is the very opposite of what we want to be like as philosophers. Right, so we're going to have a look at scepticism today. Let's start off by looking at our senses. Now, we know that our senses can be tricked. In fact, good optical illusions are fantastic examples of this. Let me show you some of my favourite optical illusions. So we know sometimes we see things that are not real and we know that our senses can be deceived. So the question is, what is real? And this is where things get a little bit more complicated philosophically. There's one position called radical scepticism. OK, this position states that we can't know anything is actually real. Let's return to that dream hypothesis. Consider what you're doing right now. Do you know for a fact you're actually watching a video right now? Could you just be dreaming? Maybe I don't exist. Maybe I'm just a figment of your imagination, part of your dream. Now, you might say to me, no, my dreams are normally much more bizarre or weird. This doesn't seem like a dream to me. Or maybe you might say, I tried pinching myself and I didn't wake up, so it can't be a dream. But then I would say to you, what are you basing that on? Your experience? But then who are you? You could be dreaming that you're someone else. And that stuff that you think you know about dreams and how they're meant to be, maybe you're just dreaming all that as well. How do you know what dreams are meant to be? Maybe that's just part of your dream. So it seems that we can't be sure that the, the reality around us isn't actually just an illusion. You could be an old person dreaming that you're a student. Or you might live a hundred years in the future and be dreaming about what it would be like in the past. Or as the 4th century BC Chinese philosopher said, Zhang Zhou, when he woke up uh, from a dream where he thought he was a butterfly, he said this, Now I don't know whether I was then a man dreaming as a butterfly or whether I'm now a butterfly dreaming I'm a man. This presents us with a problem. If we want to know what is real and what is true, how can we ever know what is real and what is true 
if we can't ans answer a basic question about whether or not we are dreaming. What this is an example of is a sceptical hypothesis, and these are used to try and challenge what we think we know about reality. Let me give you another sceptical hypothesis now. This one's called a brain in a vat. Now, we feel like we're experiencing the world around us, but we know that all our senses, this input data, is really just an electrical signal in our brain. Well, what if we are just a brain? Maybe we don't have a body at all. Maybe we're just a brain and we're in a vat. And in this vat, we're connected to a computer by wires. And an evil scientist, bear with me, this is getting kind of crazy now, but can you disprove it? An evil scientist is then controlling on the computer how our brain is stimulated. And he could make us see, smell, taste, feel, anything. And he's created this virtual reality for us. How would we know that this is not a virtual reality? Would there be any way of detecting it? Maybe we'd say, well, hang on, everything looks too good. Look at the graphics. It's amazing. We don't have the technology to do this. But remember, you're basing your assumptions of what technology is possible on the actual reality we think we've got here. But if this reality is not the real reality, then maybe the evil scientist is making it seem like technology is not advanced enough to do this. Maybe that's all part of the trick. Maybe in the real world, technology is way ahead of where it is in our artificial reality, our, our artificial simulation. So we're presented with a real challenge here from the radical skeptics. They seem to show, or seem to be able to show, that we can't know anything. This is where we're gonna stop and have a go at some tasks, and then we're gonna have a look at some evaluation of this radical skeptical position. All this doubt, we can't know anything for certain. But is that really true? Well, René Descartes thought not quite. Descartes was a 17th century French philosopher like Pascal, and he was heavily influential in many different areas. Um, in fact, in mathematics, you know the X, Y, Z that you use in equations to represent values you don't know. That was Descartes. In philosophy, Descartes is regarded as the father of modern Western philosophy. That's how influential he is. And in one of his works called Meditations of First Philosophy, he actually uses scepticism to try and discover what we can know is really true. So he actually talks about the dream hypothesis and the evil scientist hypothesis, although in his day he called it an evil demon. But it's the same argument. And he agreed that we can't know that we're not dreaming. Everything we're experiencing with our senses could be an illusion. And we can't know that our thoughts aren't being manipulated. So when we try and add two plus two together, we might think it's four, but maybe the evil demon or scientist is just making us think that. Maybe in reality, two plus two equals five. So we can't know, we can't trust our thoughts, we can't trust our senses. But then Descartes had an epiphany Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. So for Descartes, it was clear that even if we're being deceived, even if we can't trust our senses, well, there's one thing that we can definitely know for certain, and that's that we exist. Because if we didn't exist, then there would be no thoughts to be manipulated. There'd be no senses to be deceived. So there's one thing that we can know for certain. And in that regard, radical scepticism fails. Now, that doesn't get us very far, does it? All Descartes managed to actually achieve was show that we exist. But, well, not even we. It shows that I exist, or from your perspective, you. It doesn't even show that others exist. All we know is that we must exist because we experience our own thoughts. We're not going to get very far with that, are we? Well, let's look at a second evaluation point. 
This one's very interesting and it's quite confusing. So I recommend writing it down so you can try and understand what I mean here. But there is a contradiction at the heart of radical scepticism. Now take the, the position that radical skeptics have, and that is that we can't know anything. Okay, we can't know anything. Well, if it's true that we can't know anything, then we also can't know that we can't know anything. That means maybe we do know things, maybe we don't, we don't know. But we certainly can't know that radical scepticism is true. Because saying we can't know something is to make a claim about what we know. Now, maybe you might say, no, but we know that we can't know anything. If that's true, we know one thing. That means we know that we can't know anything. So there's a contradiction here. If we're going to believe that we can't know anything, and we think it's true that we can't know anything, then we actually know one thing. We know that we can't know anything. So there's a self-contradiction. It's self-defeating. Okay, that might be a bit bamboozling. Write it down, see if you're able to explain it. A third evaluative point is this. Look at the practical situation that we're faced with. Maybe we don't know that we're dreaming. Maybe we don't know if we're being manipulated by an evil scientist. But then, what are we going to do with that? What do we do now? Practically speaking, we still have to get on with our lives. We can't genuinely live as if it could be a dream. Because what if it's not? Imagine if somebody decided, okay, this is actually a dream world, and just went crazy. Well, but what if this is reality? Then they've just wasted their one shot at a life in the real world. We actually have to act like this is reality. Just because if it's not, then there's nothing we can do about it. But if it is, then we ought to value it. We ought to show it the respect it deserves. So we're kind of in this practical bind of, we kind of have to act like this is real, even if we can't know for certain. Okay, let's move on to our last set of tasks now.